Howdy. So this week I'm not doing a cabin video because I'm not doing anything with the cabin. All we did was finish up one of the tarps and we're not even going to do the other one today. So I figured as a, an extra little thing, uh, have the weather be out today. Uh, I took a yearling buck, nothing impressive. But uh, it was snowy and crappy out all day long, so time to clean it. Um, yeah, when I first got it, it's not really hard to clean. But uh, yeah, I, nothing really, couldn't find anything about how to do it, at least for the Mark V found Vanguard, which is a bit different. So I'm going to show you how to uh, take it apart and clean it all. So this is empty, safety check. Uh, release the uh, bolt, pull on the trigger, bolt comes out. To remove the, uh, the action from the stock, use a screwdriver set that's designed for working on firearms. You don't want to use the wrong size uh, screwdrivers, otherwise you might mar them up. So, there's two bolts on the, or two screws on the bottom. Front one and the back one. Front one is smaller, back one's longer. Take these out. And that's all there is to get in the action out of this. Spring comes with it. And this stuff is pretty wet. Not on the inside, but uh, the bolt was wet, so it needed to be cleaned. So the action comes apart, and there's water underneath all this crap, so yeah, it had to be cleaned. There's the magazine, comes out of the, out of the bottom. We'll put this off to the side. Um, and this is really as far as I take it apart. You can take it, there's one screw here, and the trigger will come out. Um, yeah, I don't take the trigger out for the most part. I don't really see a need to this. It's never really gotten wet in there when I look at it. Uh, it's fairly well protected. But for the bolt, uh, in order to get the bolt apart so you can get to the firing pin, which I also clean, because there's water all over this from being uh, exposed to the elements. Um, take the screwdriver, put it right here on the back, and push this up. And then twist it and it'll be disengaged. And it didn't get it all the way. There's a catch right here you want to catch on the side. Uh, right on the side here. So let me push it back up and do it again. So I'll take a screwdriver, push it back. There it goes. When it's caught and retained you can remove the back of the bolt. And there's a ball bearing in here, you don't want to lose it. That's one of the differences between the, I know when I saw the, the assembly of the Vanguard video, they don't have that little ball bearing. And I don't know what the purpose of the ball bearing is, but when you first took it apart, it did roll away. So, take the ball bearing out and put it to the side so you don't lose it. And that's really all I do for taking it apart. Um, for cleaning the, uh, the barrel, I use my Otis kit. I like this. It's small. It doesn't take up a lot of space in my bag. And because I fired it, I'll use the brass brush. It comes with a scissors. I, like every caliber and shotgun, I think, is in this thing. Um, I just dropped one of the brass brushes. Let me see which one this one. They're all marked for caliber. This is 27. Let me find the 30 caliber brush. It's probably the dirtiest, it's the one I use the most. There we go. Yeah, 30 caliber. They're marked for caliber right on the on the brush. Put it in there. A little hoppies. I love the smell of hoppies. one a little bit. Just a little bit. And then I run that down the bore from the breech. Once it comes through, pull it home and it'll twist as it's going as it fell in the rifling. And just look at the action. You know, it'll have a light right above me so if I look down it 
I can take a look. And it's nice and clean. So, I'm not going to run the brush twice. If it's dirty, I'll run it twice. I only fired it once and I just cleaned it. I'm just really mostly doing this for demonstration purposes. I'll put that brush back. I'll do the finish the bore up first. Um, I don't use the Otis patches. I just use a generic circular patch. So all I do is find their uh, their 30 caliber uh, adapter. Put that on. Screw it together. Take my patch, fold it off center like that so that it doesn't make a circle all the way around. Run it through the center of it. Come on. Because you want it to be big on one side and I kind of wrap it around when I'm running it through. So I get some hoppies on there. It does come with some of its own, you know, Otis Ultra Bore. I've used it a time or two. I like to smell the hoppies better. Like I said, this should make this should make an aftershave that smells like hoppies. They probably do. This bottle's glass and I keep on refilling it and it's almost empty. Okay, so. Yeah, it's pretty good. Do the same thing I did before. Run the bore. Run the cable down the bore. And pull it out the end. I'll show you first. Let me make sure it's folded nice. I want it to be basically bound up in there a bit, so I'm just going to wrap it on in on itself. And then I feed it in my finger. Pull it through. Nice and dirty looking, so I know I pulled some stuff off. Do it again. I try to wrap it a different direction, so now it gets a different part of the uh, cloth. Run it again. Feed that in so it ah, jammed, fell off of my finger. Put it back to the center. Okay, feed it through. And that looks nice and dirty. Let me put this to the side. Take this, put it over here for later. I got to look at the bore. So I look at the bore, I check it out, make sure it's nice and clean, looks good, I don't see any load up in the rifling, looks good and clean. Like I said, the weatherby is a really easy uh, rifle to work on. Um, the only thing you, uh, I have to scrub down on the inside at all really is the way the bolt's designed is there's nine sets of locking lugs. Um, and so I want to go in here inside the breech here and clean those out. So. Keep an old toothbrush, never throw out your old toothbrushes, just like your old socks, they always come in handy. Your wife might disagree, she's totally wrong. Take a toothbrush, and just scrub that area out. And really you don't have to, I mean it's not going to stop it from functioning, but it only takes a minute and a half. Clean the feed ramp, clean this whole area here, this is all exposed when you're opening up the action. Well, I'm going to have to scrub this whole area here with the toothbrush. Scrub the back. The bolt comes through. And scrub all this out. We'll come back in a minute. I'll wipe off the excess. I'll scrub all that in. set this aside for a second. I'm going to work on the bolt. The same area here, get the locking lugs nice and clean. Um, if, you're, if your bolt's starting to look dark on the ridges here, you can pick up or just use some uh, like 1500 grit sandpaper um, and clean that up. Uh, yeah, it, it does tend to darken over time. Um, if you're, uh, your vent ports, which are in case the prime, you have a primer explosion, are clogged, you can clean them out with like a dental pick or a toothpick. And these actually do need it, so I'm going to have to go find one. So 
clean that all up with Hoppy, it's nice. Clean the front of the bolt. If you want to take it down further, besides removing just the firing pin mechanism, there's a pin here, and a pin here to remove the extractor and the shell ejector. Uh, I'm not taking them out on this. Take a toothbrush, put it in as far as I can get it. If I had a straight toothbrush, that should be better. One of the difference between the Vanguard and the and the Mark V, at least my version of it that I've seen, is the way the firing pin engages. This is threaded, and the ones I see on the Vanguard are not. Uh, so the number of locking lugs is different on the Vanguard series, I believe. At least I think so. Um, the Mark V is uh, kind of has nine locking lugs, and it's pretty indestructible as far as actions go. So I'm just going to scrub this whole thing down. I am going to go grab, I think a dental pick would work for cleaning those out. I'll be right back. Okay, I didn't have a dental pick, but I found a twist tie. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it tipped upside down and clean out these vents. And any of the schmutz that's in there should fall out the bottom. That's nice. I'm going to clean the hoppies off and afterwards I'll clean the inside up with some uh, well, shooter's choice grease so it action's nice and smooth. Next I'm going to work on the firing pin. Same thing, I'm going to scrub the spring down. Firing pin really, it's not affected by the fact that it's wet outside. It is pretty self-contained, but you got it apart, you might as well clean it. it down. And you're only going to apply a minute amount of, of lube to all these parts. So, and we're going to clean this up. Clean everything up. You can take this further apart. I, I, I don't see a need. It's, it's all really. The bolt's all pretty much self contained. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of. Sure choice. And just work it into the spring. You don't need that much. Come on. More than enough. Keep that out. Side, you're gonna use it again in a minute. Just work it in and wipe off any excess. But basically, you want to lubricate any place where you have metal to metal contact. Firing pin. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna take this now because I've already got my all done up. I'm gonna reassemble it. Put it back in. You're going to screw it back in until you get to the point where the hole right here for the ball bearing is almost gone. I'm going to put that into the cavity. Now I'm going to twist the bolt instead of the back end of it so I don't tip that ball up. Oh, you're just dead. Put it in there, leave the bolt up. Okay. And there's a small detent in the back of the bolt, and you want uh, you want to get this back onto here. So just I have to do the same thing I did to get it off. I put a screwdriver on, right my chest, push back, and push over. And if it's not directly lined up. Just twist it, and now it's in place. So we're good on the bolt. I'm going to clean off all the hoppies I use down here. As 
said, I'm going to lube it up afterwards with uh, the shooter's choice and key places. Clean up all this. You get most of your dirt in the action here, in the breach. The feed ramp, nice and clean. And get as good as you can in those locking lug areas. Okay, clean the, sorry, the trigger assembly. So some people take their trigger assembly off and they do a complete clean. I leave mine on. And so far I've never had any rust inside of it. And I have taken it off to check. Uh, so I don't find a need to. Okay, I'll clean the barrel when I'm all done. So I take a little bit of Shooter's Choice. I get it in the locking lug areas. Again, too much is almost worse than not enough. Get it in each one and we'll smooth it out. And I just use my finger. Some people use like a Q-tip. I can't be bothered. Okay. There it goes. I'll put a little bit on the back of the action so it's nice and smooth. that in. All the way around. And I try to work a little bit of the excess to where the magazine fits. So I take my guns apart often. Um, even the ones I don't fire, they get taken apart uh, a couple times a year. So, they don't tend to set. And on a day like today where it's snowing hard, definitely I take them apart and clean them. It gives me something to do at night. I'm at the cabin. On the bottom half, you definitely want to take this spring here and get some grease on it. These springs rust. So I'll take the spring off. Don't drop that portion. Don't drop the bolts. So, just a little bit of grease on there. I mean, this is, there's no, you're not going to over grease these, but there's no point in using them when you have to. Okay, take the side again. Work the grease on both sides of the spring and clean that off. Make sure you remove the spring and get the bottom side. Just work the split grease in. Just to keep it from rusting. Okay. Put it back. bottom I just use hoppies on the trigger uh, guard magazine bo uh, bottom here this is an 80s vintage I don't know if other vintages of the mark 5 are different it's the only one I own so It's all said and done, I'll, I'll wipe all the exterior parts one more time. So anyway, what else from my fingers gets covered? Got all the parts that are on the inside. And we're done. I quickly wipe off the barrel, but I'll wipe off the barrel again once I get the action on. So I get the parts of the barrel that are on the bottom. Okay, 
nice and clean. Get all my locking, or get all the lugs that are on the bottom of the barrel clean. Front of the scope mount. Some parts are just easier to do when you have it apart. And I wiped out most of the exterior parts afterwards. So now I'm ready to put it back together. I'm going to try to get off all the excess when I put it together here. So take a nice clean patch, wipe it down again. It takes twice as long doing this talking about it than it actually usually takes. Okay, put it back in the action. Oh, I didn't do the magazine yet. Magazine. Okay, wipe that down as well. For the most part, the magazine should not be wet. It only gets loaded from the top, and I only shot once. So the rest of the time, the breech was closed and the magazine was not accessible, but it got it apart, might as well clean it. Looks good. You can fit it now. You can fit it into the stock. And 50% of the time I forget to put the magazine in and then have to come back afterwards to take it apart. Is what it is. Because if you do, you can just put it in from the bottom. Slide the spring in, put the bottom on, long bolt goes in the back, short one goes in the front. Use a proper size screwdriver. Don't just pick any old screwdriver up. You want it to be the right side, otherwise, you're going to mar up your threads. You're going to mar up your. Uh... So I could pretend like this is actually. Uh... You know, continuing on where I was, but I didn't empty the stupid card out. It was the second time I've had to, to delete old videos. So, like I said, we tighten up the screws, tighten them down good, but you don't got to be monkey tight on them. You know, use the proper size screwdriver and give them a good twist. You don't want to do it so that they're, you know, like I said, monkey tight. But, they're good. In order to get the bolt back in, it's fairly simple. There's a detent inside the action and in order to get it back in you pull the trigger to pull the detent down and that will allow the, the bolt to go back in. There it goes. You won't just pass that in, in order to get the action out you pull the trigger and that lets the action slide in now. So once the action's in, it's back together. If you want to test the action in a weather remark 5 the action will only open if it's on fire on fire it's unsafe, action doesn't work. So work the action a number of times to take any of that, uh, that shooter's choice I put down on, on the, uh, on the bolt and the action, get it nice and distributed, but you want a nice smooth action. Especially on something like the, like the 300, which has a very long draw on the action, but it's nice because it has a very short throw now, compared to a lot of my bolt action rifles. This has just got a little bit of a throw and you're good. So once you get that done, it's safety check, there's nothing inside the action. Pull the trigger, firing pin fires. That's, that's all there is to it. This is a uh, Assembly disassembly of a uh, Weathery Mark V uh, in 300 Weathery caliber, um, 80s vintage. Just to give you an idea, let me see here. I think this one's made in Japan. Uh, made in Japan. So the other countries of origin, Mark Vs may or may not be different. I haven't got a clue. Yeah, this is mine. And it's an awesome rifle. I'm glad my dad gave it to me. This is a family heirloom. Although this high gloss stock, I'm always yeah, 
Every time you take it out in the woods, I'm always afraid I'm going to scratch it, and it's got scratches on it. This rifle isn't mint condition. It's in very, very nice condition. Um, but I'm always afraid. Well, like my dad always said, if you're not willing to use your tools, there's no point in owning them. So, again, assembly and disassembly of a, and cleaning of a Weatherby Mark V. Uh, and this is a, this particular one is in uh, Weatherby 300 caliber from an 80s vintage Japanese model. Thanks for watching.